Let's review some journal entries for capital stock transactions. So in this example, it says to prepare the journal entries for the following transactions. We have three different days here. First, a company issues some common stock, then they issue some preferred stock, and then they buy back 3,000 shares of their common stock. So let's start with this transaction on January 1st. Anderson Corporation issues 10,000 shares of $5 par value common stock for $80,000. So we need to be thinking as Anderson Corporation, what are we getting? Well, we are getting cash. So our cash has to be debited, it has to increase. Now, why are we getting this cash? Because we're issuing stock, right? So we'll credit our common stock. Now, how about start filling in some numbers here? So how much cash are we getting? Well, it says that we're issuing these shares for $80,000. So we're getting $80,000 in cash. Common stock, we're going to need to calculate that amount. So we take our number of shares times our par value. So we're issuing 10,000 shares times the $5 par value, and we get $50,000. So we'll credit common stock for 50,000. Now you'll notice your debits and credits don't equal. That's because we issued these shares at $8 a piece, but the par value was only five. So we have this paid in capital in excess of par. How do we find this number? Well, we could just take 80,000 minus 50,000, right? Your debits and credits have to equal. But there's more of an explanation as to how they could get that 30,000. What we do is we take our number of shares times the difference between the market price and our par value. So we sold each share for $8.00. Our par value was 5, so 10,000 times 3 gets us that 30,000. Now on February 18th, Anderson Corporation issues 5,000 shares of $10 par value preferred stock for $90,000. It's going to be pretty similar here to what we did for the common stock. What are we getting as a company? We are getting cash. And why are we getting this cash? Because we issued preferred stock. So we debit our cash and we credit preferred stock. Now how much cash are we getting? That's where that $90,000 comes into play. All right, so we'll debit our cash 90,000. Preferred stock, we have to calculate that amount. We take our number of shares times our par value. So 5,000 shares times the $10 par value and our preferred stock amount is going to be $50,000. Now again, our debits and credits don't equal. So we have this paid in capital in excess of par for preferred. So once again, you could just take 90,000 minus 50,000 to find out that we need to credit paid in capital 40,000. But there's another way to get that number. So we take our 5,000 shares that we're issuing and multiply it by the difference between the market price and our par value. So if you take $90,000 divided by 5,000 shares, you'll see that you sold each share of preferred stock for $18. We take 18 minus the $10 par value, multiply that by the 5,000 shares, and we get our $40,000. Now here on March 10th, Anderson Corporation buys back 3,000 shares of its common stock for $15,000. So when a company buys back shares of stock, we call that treasury stock. So we'll be debiting our treasury stock for this journal entry. Now, how did they buy this treasury stock? Well, they used cash. Right? They said that they bought it for $15,000. So we'll have to credit our cash. And our amounts for this entry is just the 15000 